my grandfather um, was from Evergreen, Alabama, and he was very much so into hunting dogs. And he would get these magazines called Full Cry. And back in like 92, 93, um, I remember sitting down with him and we would look at these magazines at the dogs and stuff like that. And he would talk to me about the dogs and we would read the articles about the dogs. And I discovered the Rottweiler from my father's friend named Dion, who was a police officer. And he had a, 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 um, a dog named Prince, beautiful Rottweiler. My first interaction with the breed. And, at the time, he was the most beautiful. Now I've been sitting still, close to a year. Had to read your job. I can, you know, talk about every Rottweiler that made an impact on my life, which led me to to finding Mac. So that's what this story is about. That's what this documentary is about. It's about Akbar Force Mac and our story and how we found each other and how we came together and how it is right now. In the beginning, I would say maybe 2006, somewhere around there, I had just moved to Atlanta, fresh, you know, new to the city. Three P, it's about to be a three P. The only thing you good for is a retweet. I get love in Baltimore and in DC. Come up 95 North in the street sweep, skylight. So they put me down six feet, TSD. This bitch about to be a three P, homicide. I'm dead. In I wanted a Rottweiler. And I didn't have all the knowledge and stuff that I know now. I was very naive. And I found a Rottweiler. It might have been in like a, a advertisement magazine for classifiers or something like that. I can't remember, but I didn't pay top dollar for this dog. But I really loved this dog. And my homeboy B. Dunn had drove me all the way to um, West Georgia. I'm sorry. East Georgia someplace. All the way on 20 to go get this Rottweiler puppy. And I named her Remy. And she was the first Rottweiler that I owned and the start of me becoming what I am now as far as my knowledge and stuff for the breed. So this has been a long time coming for me. I wanted a male, but she didn't have any males available and I didn't get I didn't get to pick Remy. She just gave me a dog. I just wanted a dog that bad and she just gave me Remy. I actually lost Remy to Pavo. That sucked because that was my, my first and my only experience with that. It only took me one time to learn about Pavo and the preventative steps you can take to not experience anything like that again. I ended up having my first child and you know, one thing I can remember from my child is my mother never let <laughs> let us have a dog because we lived in apartments in the city, you know, so it wasn't like we can, you know, there was room for a dog to run around and play, but I wanted my, my son, my kids to grow up with a dog. So I went back to the magazines. I didn't know no better y'all. <laughs> and um, I found a dog out in Austell, Georgia. I remember going up to get this male dog who I named Tyson and the breeder telling me that he didn't give him any shots. He didn't, you know, um, he didn't do anything for the dog besides dog to dog's tail and do, do claws and stuff like that. And I'm just thinking to myself, yo, I got to get this dog because if I don't, he's going to die because he's not taking care of the dog. And it was cheap backyard breeder. And I felt like I was saving Tyson. And um, Tyson stayed with me for a long time. Um, my family and, you know, he passed away. He had a heart attack. I think he was like five years old. So we're about to be five years old. After that, I was pretty much done. I didn't really want to, you know, get back into dogs. So I didn't have a dog for a while after that. When I bought my house and I had my daughter, um, that's when things kind of changed where I started to say, you know what, I got a little bit of space now. Maybe I could, I could get a dog. So I started doing a little bit of research and I really didn't see anything out there, but my wife had knew somebody who had just had a litter of puppies. I guess their father was a breeder and they gave us a puppy. And that's the dog that I have now, her name is Rena. Once again, no pedigree, but it was a family pet. So I um still no knowledge of the breed. You know, if you would have asked me about pedigree back then or the different types of Rottweilers and extreme looks and all that other stuff, I couldn't have told you anything. But I knew what I wanted because I was still thinking about the dogs that I seen back in the day and 
wanted to be better. I knew that they had to be better. So I started reaching out to different breeders in the Metro Atlanta area, like people who I thought that had, had good stuff. Some people got back to me, some people didn't. Like I sent out a lot of emails to a lot of different kennels. I can't say that one kennel that got back to me was Atlanta House Rottweilers. They got back to me and I can't think of the woman's name, but she spent a lot of time talking to me on the phone, like just giving me knowledge and stuff like that. I wanted to really get into breeding. I just didn't know how, I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't know what I was gonna be breeding for. I didn't, you know, I felt like my mind just opened up more to what I was seeing with, with the breed of people who was around. I ended up getting in contact with uh, this guy out in Gainesville who's Tim Rucker, who's one of my buddies right now. And um, before we met, we just had numerous phone conversations and he would tell me about what he's doing and stuff like that. And I really liked how his dogs look. I said, you know what? When you have a, a litter of puppies, your next litter, I'm gonna get one from you. He said, all right, cool. So I think maybe some time had passed. It had been about six, seven months. We hadn't really talked. During that six, seven months, I had reached out to another breeder. And this is when things kind of like took a turn when I reached out to this other breeder because he gave me information that nobody had told me before. Like he really had, you know, told me some stuff. So I reached out to a guy named Jeff who, um, Runs, runs Atlanta Aus Rottweilers, if I'm saying it right. He's out in Fayetteville, Georgia, and I reached out to him. My, my brother-in-law lives on that side of town that happened to be be down there. So I hit him up like, yeah, I'm, I'm around your way or whatever. Can I come by, check out the dogs? So he said, yeah, come on. So I'm first meeting him up, and I was impressed by his mail. He had a big, a, a big mail, and he was telling me about the pedigree of his mail. But I remember him just spitting out all these pedigrees to me about the dogs and stuff. And I was looking at all his dogs. His dogs were very well trained, very well behaved. And as he's talking to me, um, we're walking through the kennels and we get to this one female dog that he had. And I stopped and I said, where'd you get this dog from? She was a puppy at the time. Cause he had little puppies, but he had this one puppy separate from all other puppies. And he was like, yeah, that's my new female, you know? And he told me these boys out in Alabama be breeding they got the dogs coming from overseas blah 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 and I was like word I was like she's tough I, you know I never seen a, a Rottweiler like that quality like just she just she stood out and it was this Coco female Coco Von Brantley I'm the, that, that's her registered name but it was a Von Brantley dog I believe I was like man she's beautiful and he was really excited telling me about the dog so as we wrapping up he was like you know what Mike you might want to start researching some pedigree, like look up some of these dogs. He told me about Japanic. And I remember Japanic because it sounded so much like Japan or Japanese. So when I when I went home, I looked up Japanic on the pedigree database and I seen that his father was Miles of Nicola's Lion. I didn't look up Miles at the time, but I remember that name because of Japanic. So it kind of just, it stuck together. And that was a, a, a moment that, um, I started to see like my knowledge and stuff like that change because when me and Tim finally met, Tim had started to build a relationship with the people out in Alabama who Jeff was telling me about. So when me and Tim linked up, I had called him and said, hey, you got the, the litter of puppies, you know, cause I was waiting for the one by a puppy. And uh, Tim was like, nah, you know, I sold all the puppies. I was like, damn, you know, you forgot about me. He was like, nah, you know what we'll do is, he was like, when your female come in heat, I'll hook you over with the stud, breed the stud, breed the female, whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. So that was the game plan I was going to roll with. You know, um, whenever she came in the heat, I was going, you know, breed it. He had a dog named Zeus, who was very well known in Metro Atlanta or whatever. And I was going to reinvest back into my my kennel and kind of build up from there, buy some, some quality dogs. So I was telling him, like everybody keeps telling me about these dudes in Alabama. So I asked Jeff to make the connection and Jeff had called Wayman Reeves for me. And um, Tim had reached out to somebody who he knew, Cornelius Jackson, who I guess had made the play for me as well. Wayman had finally called me back and I was talking to him on the phone. And I was telling him like, yeah, I've been hearing a lot of good things. I was like, can I check out some of the dogs? And he had forwarded me to his Facebook. And looking at the Facebook and instantly like 
it, it ain't take me that long to decide like yeah I got it I have to get a dog from him because at this point now I had already done the research on pedigree and stuff like that so I knew what I was buying we take a trip out to Alabama go pick up my dog and man oh man like that trip going out to his kennel kind of changed my whole thought process as far as what I was doing I had to reevaluate my whole situation because everything he had in his jaw was like was top like you know he he was importing dogs from overseas and he he had this and it, it, it I mean it just it, it blew my mind so um I was like you know what I do videos and stuff everybody know I do videos and photos but you know show my appreciation I was like let me um let me do a video you know do a video or something like that for his dog so I'm like all right cool so he's bringing bringing the dogs out and he's bringing the dogs out he's bringing the export pedigrees and he's like yeah just read the pedigrees of the dogs and we show the dogs so when reading the pedigrees and stuff one name kept popping up which is Agba Force I ain't know what the hell Agba Force was I just thought that was something that they was just putting the name of the dogs I'm like what the hell I couldn't even pronounce the shit right I don't think so but I'm reading it and um I'm seeing like yo there's a common denominator between the dogs that you have, which is just Akba for shit. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm reading it. On the ride back, me and Tim was talking from Alabama, going back to Georgia. You know, you know, we talking about it. He's like, yo, that Akba for shit is hitting. They, you know, out in Europe, whatever, out in Romania. And Tim was like, yo, his next move was he was gonna import. And at the time, I wasn't thinking nothing about that. Like my mind was the my mind was on no import and nothing. Like well, I ain't about to import nothing. You know, they got everything over here. I'll just buy something from them. You know, they why well, spend that money to import a dog and they got it over here. So Tim had made the decision that he was going to do it. And as my female Micha that I got from Wayman um, Vaughn Reeves was getting older, I was happy with what I had. I didn't have a male. Tim calls me one day and he says, yo, I'm thinking about doing it. Um, the father of Ghost, which is Agba Force Isaac, I mean, the mother of Ghost, which is Agba Force Isaac, is Agba Force Wanda. And um, he said that Cornelius had told him that they about to breed Wanda to Miles of Nicola's line. I note when I said Japan and Miles, so I remember who it was. And when he sent me the picture of Mauser, I think it was just a headshot. I was like, yo, he is tough. I like him because he was dark. And I remember the name, but I never really looked at him. I just looked at Japan. So I was like, yo, I like him. He's tough. So I, um, I was like, yo, I support it. Like, you know, hey, go, go ahead and get it. Now, at this time, I'm stuck on not importing at all. But I'm supporting him because this is what he want to do. So... I say, you know what, I gotta get me a male. I'm gonna give you a deposit because he had a, a female that I really like. He doesn't have that female no more. Her name was Coco. So I was like, you know what? She's about to drop some drop some puppies soon. I was like, let me just get first pig male off that litter. So he was like, all right, cool. Now, at this point, he had already made the connection with Agba Force. He built a relationship with them. And him and I are building because I'm gonna get this first pig male puppy from uh, Coco and Zeus litter. So, he sent his deposit. He got first pick from um, Miles and Wanda. You know, he's talking to me about it. And finally, the puppies drop. The puppies drop. And he's all excited. You know, the puppies going to be here. I got first pick. You know, I can't really see what they're looking like yet. So, as the puppies getting older, finally, um, Colin and Simona sent him some pictures. So, he's sending everybody... The pictures like me and you know a couple people who was around at the time like photos like asking our opinions what we think about the dogs and I remember he sent me like three or four photos of males that he was deciding from and one of the males that he sent me a picture of was Batman and when I saw the picture of Batman I remember word for word I said that black one is it I said I would get him and he told me, he said, damn, everybody keeps saying the same two dogs, which was his dog that he has now, Major, and Batman. And I was like, yo, I would love to see a video with just them two. Because the, the other ones, 
the whole you can't go wrong with the whole letter. Even people were saying like, you can't go wrong with either one of them, but those two stood out, and I gravitated towards Batman, and he was already gravitating towards Major, but he couldn't make his mind up. And then there was Agba Force Morris, who looked like Batman, just a, a little bit lighter. But when I seen Matt Batman, I was like, yo, he's just, he's magnificent. Like, yo, he's he's fire. I, I, I would get him. Now, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the running to get the dog. I'm just giving him my opinion. So in the midst of all this, one day he called me. He told me, yo, I lost a litter of puppies. It was born. And I lost him. So I was kind of devastated because I had my, my mind set on having a Zeus son. And that was going to be the start of everything for me, you know, because I really like Zeus, you know. And I had a female already. I just needed a male. He was like, yo, what you want to do? You want to wait till another little? You want me to just give you your money back? And I was like, you know what? Let me let me think about it. It didn't take me long. Yo, one, one thing about me, if you know me, you know this. It won't take me long to make a decision if I'm passionate about something. When he said that shit to me, I think I talked to my wife like five minutes. I called him back while I texted him, something like that. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, just give me the bread back. I was like, remember that black puppy? I wonder if he's still available if anybody had said anything. Like, and he was like, nah, because I ain't made my pick yet. And I was like, yo, how about we import together? We could probably save on the shipping because I want that black puppy. And he was like, all right, let's do it. So... At this point, I ain't know who Colin and Simona was. I knew they were in Agba Force Kennel, but I had never talked to them and none of that. I immediately sent Simona and Colin a friend request. And I was like, look, I'm Mike Mongo. I like that puppy. I want that puppy. I'm going to send you the deposit. She was like, no, hold up. <laughs> she was like, hold up, wait. Um, Tim has first pick. He hasn't made a decision yet. After he makes his decision and... I said, look, okay, all that stuff is cool. I was like, but if I don't get this puppy, I'm not getting no dog. I was like, so I'm going to call Tim. This is what I'm saying. All this in the message, yo. I was like, I'm going to call Tim and I'm going to tell Tim, this is what I want to do. Because me and him already talked about it. He already knows that I'm passionate about this particular puppy. And um, that day, he had made his decision. He had got Major. I had got Mac. Boom. The rest is history. I started promoting him. They started sending me pictures and videos and stuff like that. I would just remember being super excited about what I knew that I would do, what I knew I would do with him once he once he got here. And my knowledge and stuff started growing even more. Me promoting him and blasting him all on Facebook didn't come with his fair share of backlash though, I'm not going front. The same people who, you know, would give me a like or a, a, a nice comment or something like that would be in somebody else's inbox talking shit about me or my dog. But then they'll turn around and ask me who the parents were or can they buy him and all this other stuff or can they get a puppy? And it mainly was because he was dark, you know, like he's different. He's not like, and that's what was special to me about him. And I'm going back to Prince back in, you know, the 90s and stuff, the dog that I, the first rock while I fell in love with, and Matt kind of reminded me that he put me back in that, in, you know, that, that feeling that I got. And all these years, he's been what I've been looking for, what I've been wanting. I didn't give a damn what anybody thought. And now you see him now, because he's really, I'm gonna tell you, when you see him in person, he's not as dark as you think. You know, photos is different from how to see him alive, but he is beautiful, and he's the most beautiful. Not the most correct, but the most beautiful. I took it on the chin, like, all right, fuck it. Like, you know, he's not traditional. Yes, he is sooty, muddy, whatever you want to call it, but he's dope. I'm happy, and I'm excited about the future that him and I are going to have together. I'm happy about the following that he has because he has a lot of people worldwide, not just here in the States, who love him, who will type in Batman the Rottweiler, Agba Force Mac, and his pictures will come up, his videos will come up. We work well as a team. We work good together. We're going to continue to show him and all that good stuff. I think we have many good years ahead of us. FTD, Rod Wallace, Agba Force, Mac, and Batman. So, thank y'all for checking out this documentary and um, listening to the story and continue to follow our journey. 
three P. It's about to be a three P. The only thing you good for is a retweet. I get love in Baltimore and in DC. Come up 95 North in the street sweep skylight. So they put me down six feet, TSD. This bitch about to be a three P homicide. I'm debting everyone if you want the other side. Stay in your place, don't you cross the line. For everybody that slept on a nigga. Turn they back on me and they stepped on a nigga I'm your worst nightmare, damn is it was bad